What's up guys, it's Jan for Chess24. In this video we will cover the last round game played by Magnus Carlsen in the World Rapid Championship. Going to this last round, Carlsen found himself tight for first place together with Vladislav Artemiev and Vincent Keimer, which meant he most likely needed a victory to clinch the title or at least to reach a tiebreak in this World Rapid Championship. Now the classical world champion had dominated for most of the event but he found himself in his three-way tie because of a dramatic blunder two rounds earlier in the 11th round when he played with the black pieces against Vladislav Artemiev. The game was fairly equal but Carlsen hung a piece showing us he is human playing knight to e4 here allowing pawn to f4 queen has to go to f5 trying to stay in touch with the knight on e4 but after g4, the queen can no longer cover it. And therefore, Carlsen went on to lose that game. After that, he had a somewhat shaky draw with the white pieces against Fabian Carana. And then found himself facing Masudlu in the last round, getting the white pieces again, which I'm sure he did not mind. If you're not familiar with Parham Masudlu, he is a 22-year-old grandmaster from Iran, was the world junior champion in the year 2018 and is a very, very strong player who has not broken through to the absolute top yet, but could very well be on his way. So let's have a look at what happened. Carlson with the white pieces goes for pawn to e4. He's played everything in the tournament, pawn to c4, pawn to b3, pawn to d4, but this time he decides it's time for the e-pawn. And one big part of his reasoning will have been that Masud Lu, more often than not, does not play any of the quote-unquote blocking systems in modern chess, like the Petrov or the Berlin or the Marshall, but goes for more aggressive stuff, like in this game, where we will see the classical Sicilian. Open Sicilian, no messing around from Carlsen, and knight to c6. The world champion goes for the main line, bishop to g5, Masud Lu plays e6, queen to d2. And here the trendy line is what happens in this game. Pawn to a6, making sure there's no unpleasant surprises on b5 after black goes bishop d7. And also eventually preparing knight takes d4, followed by b5. White goes for a sharp game with long castles. And black plays bishop d7, covering this knight and preparing pawn to b5. In this position, most white players prefer the move pawn to f4 after which we get a very complex strategic struggle that, frankly, I never fully understood. Pawn to b5, white takes here. Black has to recapture with the pawn. Queen takes f6, I think, runs into some trickery after e5 takes, knight takes b5. So g takes f6, and we often get a long maneuvering battle where white is a little better, probably, because of his more compact pawn structure, and it's not so easy for the black king to find a safe shelter. But black has his chances, and many players don't mind this with black. Carlsen decides to go for something else, plays the move pawn to f3, making this, in a way, a more straightforward Sicilian, where white often wants to push his pawns h4, g4, then get his bishop out of the way, push the pawns further, and try to checkmate the black king, should it ever land on the king side. Master Lu takes on d4, queen takes back, and bishop e7. This is still very much theory. Carlsen plays the move king to b1, always useful in the Sicilians, making sure the king never ends up in an unpleasant check, for example, on the c1 square. It should be noted that white, more often than not, does not want to take here after playing this f3. Black would recapture with the bishop, sacrifice the pawn on d6, and after queen takes d6, queen e7, the pair of bishops give black very full compensation for the missing pawn. This is not really an attempt to try to get an advantage. So instead, Carlsen plays the move king to b1. Masud Lu plays pawn to b5. White goes pawn to h4, already preparing this launch of pawns on the king side. And here, I think Masud Lu commits an inaccuracy. He plays the move rook to b8, preparing pawn to b4, but it's not clear the rook belongs there in all the lines. And this plan, frankly, is a little slow. What the experts usually play here is queen to c7. White does something like pawn to g4. Black castles into it, trying to bring this other rook. And now, white has a bunch of moves, but in practice, usually 
he chooses to retreat voluntarily with the queen to d2, keep an eye on c2, and we get a very complex struggle. After b4, knight e2, rook fc8. The computer slightly favors white, but there is all to play for. Black does have serious counterplay. Maybe d5, maybe a5, maybe bishop to a4 at the right moment, maybe b3. This is a complicated position that I'm curious what would have happened. Instead, rook b8 was played, as mentioned, a little slow, and white just continues with his plan. Goes pawn to g4. Next order of business is usually to go back with the bishop and then push g5 or h5 followed by g5. Black plays b4, kicking this knight away. That was the idea of rook b8. But the knight is happy to leave, goes to e2, and it could rejoin the action via g3, controlling the h5 square, which is useful. Should white ever want to go g5, because no black knight can land here. Pawn to a5, once again, continuation of this slightly slow plan. The problem is a4, b3 looks very natural, but more often than not, it doesn't really lead to a big attack. White can capture and play a3, or sometimes even take twice if the black piece aren't ready. So it is a very, very brazen approach to go b4 and a5. And Carlson gets the knight out of the way. As mentioned, this is a good square. Queen goes to c7. It was already tough to give good advice here. If black castles, this bishop would move somewhere, e3 or c1, the attack would keep rolling. g5, h5, f4. Not a nice position. So Master Lu tries to keep his king in the center for now. Goes queen to c7. Bishop to e3. And the first sign that something's gone wrong, he has to move the rook again. Rook c8, or he decides to move the rook again, to attack the pawn on c2. Black white just went a4. White is much, much quicker with his attack g5. The black position crumbles. Castling into it is once again not a very exciting proposition. White goes g5, knight e8, f4. h5 is next. Black doesn't have enough counterplay. So black tries rook c8, attacking this pawn. And Carlson covers it with rook to h2. Nice move, keeping the rook in action on the king's side while keeping an eye on the c2 pawn. Computer, however, says there was no need to cover this pawn and really likes to move bishop to a6, just sacrificing. And after queen takes c2, king goes to the corner, king to a1. Let's say rook to a8, the bishop goes back. Queen has to go back somewhere, pawn to g5. And the white initiative is still overwhelmingly strong. Black does have pawn to e5, forcing white into a queen exchange, but it turns out that even without queens, and the pawn down. Its position is pretty terrible for black. Because knight has to go back home. White continues pushing with knight f5. And the pressure would be tremendous. But Carlson, understandably, was not in the mood to sacrifice any pawns. Just covers it with rook h2. And the black position does remain fairly shaky. Has some hopes to generate counterplay. Maybe hitting this knight on g3 with a timely d5, and d5 is indeed played in the game. Peel said the best chance was to wait for a move, bishop c6, and then after g5, strike with d5. But even this looks highly, highly unpleasant for black. I can just go rook g2, cover the knight, and ask black what he wants to do next. So Masalu tries to free himself by going pawn to d5, hitting the knight, but of course Carlsen keeps the center close, goes pawn to e5, blocking this connection. And the black idea was that now after pawn to e5, he can actually castle. The tactical point being, white should probably not take on f6, because after e takes f, bishop takes f6, black will regain this piece here. For example, queen f4, bishop e5. And white hasn't achieved all that much. The good news for the world champion is that he doesn't have to take. Instead, he plays a nice little move, bishop a6, we talked about earlier, asking this rook to leave the knight nice square on c8 before the bishop decides where it wants to go. So bishop a6, rook to a8, attacks it, and the bishop goes back to d3 into attacking position. The black position remains very tough to play, because counterplay is just way too slow. So Master Lu goes rook fc8, and we see he had some adventures moving this rook first to b8, then to c8, then to a8, now the other rook occupies that square. Black maneuvers have not been very success successful 
And Carlson now goes queen f4. Nice little move. Threatening to take on f6. And if needed, vacating the d4 square for the bishop. The knight goes back. But now the white attack rolls. More or less unimpeded. Pawn to g5. And white has the simple black crew plan to go h5. Then maybe g6. Maybe something else that we'll see in the game. Black just does not have counter play. Maybe it was time to try pawn to b3 and hope for the best. But even then, after pawn to h5, black doesn't generate all that much here. The king just hides in the corner. White comes first. Instead, Master Lu tries to move bishop to c5. But that should not help his case very much. Exchanging his quote-unquote good bishop, the bishop on e7, or the white bishop does not mean the white attack slows down at all. Castle takes, queen takes, and he goes pawn to h5. The computer is already pointing out that violence was possible with bishop takes h7 check. King takes h7, g6, f takes g6, pawn to h5. The cover of the black king is being blown, hg6 or queen to f7 are big threats here. The computer already says white is winning, but with somewhat computerish lines like g5, queen to f7, which understandably Magnus did not feel the need to go for when he can go h5 and keep his options open. It's still unclear how black should defend. Pawn to h5 played. Master Lu chooses the move bishop to b5. Very logical strategically. He tries to get rid of this good bishop bearing at his king side and defending the c2 pawn. But the way he gets rid of it will not be to his liking. However, there was no good defense. I could try something like queen e7, but after g6, h6, gf, queen f7, the white initiative keeps rolling. Compi gives bishop h7 check, king of 8 queen e3. And white is still very much in control with the next wave of f4 and f5 coming. But that was the toughest defense, because in the game, we will see an abrupt finish after bishop to b5. Now Carlson says, okay, I have everything in place. It is time to sacrifice. And he goes bishop takes h7, check. Which is too much for the black king to handle. Pawn to g6 wasn't bad either, but bishop h7 is just tremendously strong. The pawn is after king takes h7. White goes g6, check. Once again, asking this king some unpleasant questions. He would like to hide in the corner, but after king h8, h6 comes, and there's not a lot of hiding to be done here. For example, f takes g6, queen to f7, nice quiet move. And the only way to stop h takes g7 checkmate, or takes rook takes h6, would be to sacrifice a queen with queen takes c2. So king h8 is not great, king g8, gf7, or queen f7, also not great, followed by h6. Therefore, only chance f takes g6. And now white has a choice, but castle finds the cleanest and most direct finish. He doesn't recapture. He will also win after king g6, but in a more complicated way. But he just plays the nice little move. Queen to f7. Threatening checkmate in one with h takes g. And the only way to prolong the game, if at least for one move, is g5. The problem is it doesn't really help, because h6, once again, threatens checkmate with h takes g7. Pawn is pinned. And the only way to continue the game for a move or two would be to give the queen on c2. But that's not really worth playing. So Masud Lu does resign here and Carlsen wins his last round game. Now he had to hope that his rivals Artemiev and Vincent Keimer would not win their games and his wishes did become true. Vincent Keimer with the black pieces put a lot of pressure on Maxim Vashila Graf, was very close to a win, but stumbled on the finish line had to make a draw while Artemiev lost with the black pieces to a very strong Fabiano Caruana. Which means that Magnus Carlsen, with this victory, wins the World Rapid Championship yet again, adding to his very, very impressive collection of trophies. From a German perspective, I am thrilled, of course, that Vincent Keimer, the 18-year-old, finished in second place after a tremendous tournament, only losing to Carlsen. Fabian Caruana finished in third place. It was a fun event. Thank you so much for watching these Game of the Day videos. If you did not like the black 
opening here, which I could understand, then you can check out the chessable courses you've seen on the banners below. The Nidorf is an excellent alternative. E4, E5, my course, also pretty solid if you want any of these adventures. So please check them out. Thanks for watching. See you soon.